Café Terrace at Night is one of Vincent van Gogh's most famous paintings. It was the first to represent the starry sky in an iconic way, a technique taken up in other works such as Starry Night and Starry Night Over the Rhone. We don't know much about the creation of the painting, but we can obtain information from a preparatory drawing with which differences can be traced, and from letters that reveal the production process of the work. Furthermore, one theory suggests that, by painting this work, Van Gogh wanted to pay homage to Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper by inserting some elements. Before continuing with this theory, I want to tell you a bit about the background and the painting. Cafés embody the very essence of French culture. Regardless of the commonplace perception, the truth is that these public spaces have had a significant place in the urban experience of the country since the late 17th century. Although this modernist master was not the type of bohemian like his contemporaries, Vincent van Gogh, too, responded to café culture. The painting Van Gogh made in 1888 championed his mastery in presenting a landscape during the night while addressing the time of the day when all inhibitions and social conventions fail. According to the curators at the Van Gogh Museum, Café Terrace at night must have been partly inspired by the novel Bel Ami by Guy de Maupassant. Although the artist did not sign the painting, he described its process in three letters to his sister, Wilhelmina, his brother Theo, and his peer, the painter Eugene Bach. The composition suggests that the artist observed the site from the south, looking at the terrace of the famous café, the darkness of the Rue du Palais, and the tower of a former church now active as a musée lapidaire. On the right, Van Gogh accentuated a shop and a few branches of the surrounding trees. Interestingly, Van Gogh executed café terrace at night, dominated by blue and yellow hues, without using black color. In a letter to his sister, the artist expresses, now there's a painting of night without black, with nothing but beautiful blue, violet, and green, and in these surroundings the lighted square is colored pale sulfur, lemon green, ending by underling how much he enjoys painting at night. Looking closer at Van Gogh's blue and yellow masterpiece reveals his playful brush strokes that upgrade an overall nightly impression of the composition. The background buildings that seem to be painted in black enhance the depth of the darkness, Another important aspect regarding the production of this work is the exact depiction of the celestial constellation in the sky, according to which the scholars concluded that Van Gogh created Café Terrace at night in early September 1888 at about 11 p.m. It's possible that one of Van Gogh's most famous artworks contains an allusion to an even more famous painting, Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. A religious allusion wouldn't be too out of character for Van Gogh. Before devoting his attention to painting, the famous Dutch artist had wished to preach the gospel everywhere, and his father, Theodorus van Gogh, was a pastor for a Dutch Reformed church. Vincent's uncle was a renowned Dutch theologian and biblical scholar who helped his nephew in his endeavors to become a preacher, a pursuit at which he would fail multiple times. Independent researcher Jared Baxter holds a few theories on van Gogh's use of religious symbolism. Around the time working on Café Terrace at night, van Gogh wrote to his brother Theo, I have a tremendous need for shall I say, the word for religion, with direct reference to the painting. In his first sketch of the work, Van Gogh outlined a café terrace at night, but the finished work has some alterations. In the final work, you can see, in addition to the central standing figure, 12 other people represent the 12 apostles. Additionally, a dark figure can be seen coming out of the door, depicting Judas. You can observe a group of people who are entering the scene. Do they have anything to do with the capture of Jesus? The main figure would represent Jesus, standing, with a white tunic and long hair. Van Gogh's trademark yellow lends itself to the heavenly appearance of the scene, and the lantern above the central figure acts as a halo. The awning is pulled back onto the terrace to reveal a cross in the distance. Van Gogh included a cross above the central subject, and two vertical and horizontal struts to support the panes, unlike the window just across the street. Of course, these religious symbols could be unintentional. However. Japanese art historian Tsukasa Kodera published several books in the 1990s on Van Gogh's use of mythology and Christianity, arguing that in paintings such as The Sour, also from 1888, Van Gogh would have turned that sun into a halo. Professor Deborah Silverman wrote in Van Gogh and Gauguin, The Search for Sacred Art, that Van Gogh's art had evolved by 1888 into a symbolist project that can be called sacred realism, a project of divinity made concrete and discovering the infinite in weighted tangibility. Van Gogh's La Berceuse, of a woman sitting in a chair, could also be interpreted as a Madonna, considering the painting's original placement between two of the artist's famous sunflower depictions. The artist explained the collective works as a sort of triptych, 
Evert van Eitert has further written that the image created is that of an altarpiece in which Madame Roulin takes on the role of the Virgin Mary as Stella Maurice, and the sunflowers can be associated with Christ. Van Gogh tackled interior of the restaurant Corel in Arles several times. Baxter argues that it depicts another sort of Last Supper scene, pointing out the central figure, the diner's placement on one side of the table, and the prominence of wine. In the second stab at the work, Van Gogh added bread and more wine to the foreground. Additionally, Baxter believes the figure to the immediate left of the center, wearing blue, to be a depiction of John the Apostle's famous lean from da Vinci's work. What do you think of what was said? Do you think it's just speculation or that there's some truth to it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.